Welcome back, Zero K fans, to another exhibition match. This time we have another match between Lowry and Rymark. Once again, an Inculta happened just afterwards. They wanted to test a different matchup, so that's what they're going to do. Oh, might as well get started. We saw the last game. No real introduction is needed. Go. So Lowry is going for Amphibious. This is actually what's going to be is Amphib, Amphib versus Amphib. Yeah, actually, you might want to change the water. Come to think of it, but yeah, Amphib versus Amphib. Pretty much going to be almost entirely underwater. As you can see, there are some hills under the water, so units can go up, I think. Actually, I don't, no, I don't think so. I don't think this is pathable. I think this area is. A few of these areas are, but there are no metal on land in this map, so it's not really worth it. Huh. Okay, anyway. That aside, yeah, it's going to be Amphib versus Amphib. That's the matchup we're watching. And opening ducks from both players. We do have Loudry coming with a couple of their ducks. And a conch is coming behind that. While Loudry, on the other hand, is coming in with also a few ducks. So yeah, Rymark now over to the east and Loudry to the west. Bit of a switch up from last time. And yes, I know red is pathable, purple isn't, but I can't tell. I think purple is underwater. It's hard to tell though, because once you get underwater, it all looks purple. Yeah, that is what it is, as far as I can tell. Yeah, then we have ducks coming in, and that is... Well, that's going to Lowry. Right off the bat, Rymark loses a couple ducks very early on. Nice shot there, though. Does hit a couple of Lowry's ducks, but still not enough Rymark. Rymark not doing too well. And Rymark actually, once again, leaving their factory idle. They really don't have to. They have the metal for it. A little surprised they're doing that. But yeah, they have not started their factory up. Lowry, on the other hand, Lowry's going for infinite build, as usual. Lowry doing infinite build, low priority, while Rymark doing non-infinite build, normal priority. And that's, a, that's I think, is a big difference. Because Rymark, last game we saw that too, they weren't really building a whole lot. They left the factory in idle for a while, rather than just putting on low priority or something like that. Now, Lowry going over to the south, and... I'm curious, is this actually coming through? Like, is it clear where the ducks are? I mean, if I zoom out, it becomes clearer because of the X-ray shader, but if I'm zoomed in, is it clear where the ducks are? Or is that messing up the compression? Because if it's messing up, I can change the water. It's not a big deal. Oh yeah, it's an important thing to point out, actually. Amphibious units do actually heal while submerged, and also, they don't use the same weapons as on ground. Most of the Amphib matches we've seen so far have been above ground. As they've been Amphib units on ground, occasionally underwater, usually on the ground, and that's... That's a totally different weapon set. Like, ducks here use torpedoes. Buoys can't really do much. The yeah, buoys kind of have... They can surface to attack, but they can't really attack underwater. We might see the depth charge amphib, actually. Or, there isn't one. No, never mind. I'm thinking of hovercraft. We won't see that. That was the claim where I was thinking of. But anyway, there's... Yeah, the scallops throw... Actually, scallops are what I was thinking of. Scallops throw depth charges now. And archers are basically useless. Uh, Rymark actually... Is Rymark ahead in metal? Yes, Rymark is ahead on metal. 22 metal to 16. Lowry is behind. Very slightly, though. Lowry's easily going to be able to get back from this. Yeah, Rymark... What does Rymark have for builders? They have a builder down here. And they have one... They have a commander up, up top. Which needs to get out of the water because commanders cannot fight underwater. And now the first time we've actually seen some above ground conflict right now. And that commander... Is going to be fine. Rymark sending their forces in and defending their commander just fine. The commander should probably be out of the water because it really can't do much underwater. Getting a nice urchin on this little island, though. Yeah, Rymark. Rymark's starting to fall behind now. Lowry building up more and more metal extractors. Lowry, how many workers does Lowry have? Lowry has these two down here, one up in the south, in the northwest, and their commander. So Lowry definitely is building faster. Well, Rymark, on the other hand, now getting a lot of ducks. That is a lot of ducks. Most of which are Rymarks, actually. Only three of them are Lowry's. The other 16 or so are Rymarks. But Lowry going for Scallops instead. One Scallop has been built. Now, Scallops are above-ground riots, but below-ground, they're more like skirmishers. They throw depth charges out. They're great at range. Dealing with multiple units is a little bit tricky, but still possible. Yeah, Rymark is going to be in a slightly better position being underwater against these Scallops than above-ground. Or then on ground. Now at the same time, Loudry going for a bit of raid into the southeast, not really doing a whole lot there. But Rymark is going, well, continuing to build up ducks. Just duck after duck after duck, inf not even infinite build ducks. Wait, really? That, that's that got to be infinite. 
No, apparently that's not infinite build. Weird. Or maybe it was and they just stopped it. Regardless, Rymark, do not stop building! That's the thing I'm noticing Rymark is doing a lot. They are forgetting to build. They're forgetting to put their factor in infinite build. I don't know if they're trying to train themselves to have better multitasking on their factory, but they kind of don't need to. Just build. Don't... Or infinite build. That's That works really well. That's what the game is designed for. Anyway, Rymar's commander once again in a risky spot, but there are still scallops coming in here. But yeah, scallops are not that strong underwater for getting rid of units, the same way they are on land. They're pretty strong when it comes to dealing with... Well... I think snakes are probably pretty weak to them. I'm not totally sure. And when it comes to cross factory matchups, but when it comes to mirror matches, their range is handy. I mean, what is their range anyway? Let's double check this. Their torpedo launcher range is 400, or charge launcher, their death charge is at 430. They won't be able to outrange an urchin. The ducks can deal with them pretty well. I mean, it can in multiple units, but even then it's just not that strong. Not compared to this, not compared to the shotgun. The shotgun is so much stronger. The urchin, sorry, the, not the urchin, the scallop really is a skirmisher underwater. I mean, they're, to they're called that for a reason. And in come Rymer, wow, Rymer bringing a lot of firepower to the back here. And there is that fight to the front, but that fight's basically over. Now this fight in the back, that's what really matters. And Rymark, however, does have to contend with a few urchins and a few scallops. But even with that, oh no, actually not contending with the urchins at all. And the ducks, unfortunately, getting in each other's way. Not able to get rid of the urchins too effectively, and not able to deal that much damage. That was a lot of metal that... That's just been donated. 200 metal easy. Very quick donation there. I'm sure that Lowry really appreciates that. And Rymark and Lowry, their version here, kind of stuck. Oh, a lot of things are stuck here. Wow, that, what the heck? Yeah, there's a scallop right here. They can't really shoot past that wreckage. But anyway, Lowry is going to be setting this up with the reclaim they just got. This is not going to be hard for them to get back from here. Although, they are going to lose their commander from the looks. Yeah, they're definitely going to lose their commander. The Zuck's coming in here very strong. One more salvo, and that'll get rid of the commander. And is it going to go? Is it going to go? It... And, oh, no, there we go. Down it goes. Gets rid of the ducks, however. All the ducks get wiped off the face of the water there. But even then, Rymark still continuing to push forward, having got rid of Lowry's commander. That just puts even more pressure on Lowry. Rymark is ahead in this game so far. But L Lowry is going for a counter raid, and there isn't enough to deal with this at all. The scalpel should be able to tear apart everything that's been built up here. There is just a conch and an urchin. The conch isn't building anything more at this point, so not much really. Well, more scallops coming in, and boy as well. But like I said, boys don't really do much underwater. They surface, they shoot, they come back down. In this matchup, boys are going to be basically useless. Like, ducks are going to be useless, scallops are going to be useful, archers I think are useless. I'm not totally sure, but I'm pretty sure they're useless. Grizzlies, I'm fairly certain shoot underwater. No, they can't. Yeah, grizzlies cannot fire underwater. So yeah, basically it's duck and scallop. That's all that's going to be used this entire matchup. I probably should have thought of that before starting this cast. How awkward. Anyway. Hopefully that won't be too big of a deal. Hopefully it will be interesting enough and varied enough just with ducks and scallops. Yes, unless we see people putting grizzlies on islands, we are not going to see a whole lot of grizzly play. Or terraforming up an entire bridge, a land bridge, all the way to their opponent's base. Just to walk a grizzly over there. And that could happen. There's enough metal going around on this map just so far. Just already... How much metal is each spot? Oh, yeah, two and a half metal each spot. That's why. With the reclaim... Oh, sorry, the reclaim. The overdrive. There's some reclaim as well, but mostly overdrive. Yeah, that's a lot of metal. And that could be very easily used to terraform an entire land bridge. Just all the way from one base to another. Just to have workers leading the charge in front of the grizzly, and the grizzly tearing apart everything that tries to stop the workers. And then the grizzly just rips everything to shreds. Since this looks like it's probably going to be just amp versus amp the entire time, that's likely to happen. But yeah, the boys can be used for harassment, though. They can go, and the boys are going to be able to just get near metal extractors, surface, fire on them, go back down. They might not live especially long, but they are going to be able to do some harassment damage, and Rymar continuing to harass quite effectively. Keeping a lot of pressure on... L Lowry is only in this one section here, only in the northwest. They do have some units over here in the south, but not much. And over to the southeast, 
Rymark is continuing to build up. They actually didn't get harassed that strongly. The harassment units are over here, and did anything... No, it doesn't look like anything died. It just didn't actually approach. However, Loudy going for the main base directly. Half a dozen scalpels... Sorry. Half a dozen scallops, not scalpels. Half a dozen scallops are coming in here. Scalpels being the hovercraft missile launcher unit. Yeah, half a dozen scalpels... Sorry, scallops, once again. Messed that up. Half a dozen scallops coming in here with about a dozen ducks going to the main base. This would actually tear apart the main base. If Lowry were to attack directly right now, that would seal the game. Or pretty close to. Rymark switching over to Brawlers, going for a very quick gunship, while Lowry, on the other hand, has focused everything into ducks. Everything into ducks and scallops, and has actually re-expanded over to the southwest. So despite the earlier harassment, Lowry is very quickly rebounding. But they aren't themselves harassing, surprisingly enough. Focusing much more on defense. They aren't really focusing on harassment. They are they are now focusing on harassment. There we go. Massive attack coming in here. It is revealing the attack that's coming in, but I think it's going to hit way too quickly for Rymark to really react. I mean, Rymark's going to probably send some units back, but I think Rymark might react just by trying to go for a base trade. Trying to attack very strong themselves. And this looks like it's going to go in Lowry's favor. Yeah, not much is really in place that's going to stop that. In come the ducks, tearing apart everything. The scallops as well from the distance. The ducks kind of just tanking all the urchin shots while the scalps come in and really deal the damage. Spread all those depth charges around, a few of them missing and hitting the ground in front there, but yes. Spreading the depth charges around, and this looks like it's going to get rid of Rymark's base pretty much completely. There goes the last urchin. More urchins being built, though. Very rapid construction of urchins, trying to stop these scallops, and it's actually doing a pretty decent job. Scallops are being stopped. The ducks at the bottom as well, trying to help deal with this, and they are. Scallops actually moving back, being forced back a bit, and... Not as much damage as I expected to Rymark's base. Rymark is going to survive this at the same time. Rymark coming to the boys. The boys have surfaced. They are dealing with this. And some scallops as well. Why not? And now on the land, scallops to get rid of the ducks. Nice tactics there. I'm surprised Lowry let that happen. I don't know if Lowry is paying attention because that was a wonderful move by Rymark. Because that's where the scallops work wonders. At least against large numbers of units. Get on land and just shotgun everything. Very nicely played there, Rymark. Lowry, however, at the same time, though, they have been just expanding like mad. Rymark, not so much, but Lowry has taken the entire south side. Just all the map. All the map has been taken to the south. Enter. This has all been taken. That is a big deal. Well, Rymark, on the other hand, kind of has to contend with the fact that they are pretty much... Well... They're pretty much just focusing on this entire raid. That's all they've really got. And they have the... Or at least had the brawler. I don't think that brawler is still alive. I suspect it has been killed by an angler. My suspicions are correct. Brawler wreckage on the ground. And coming in with more harassment, Lowry basically gets rid of Rymark's entire southeast side of the map. This is not good, I'm afraid. Oops. Didn't want to do that. All right. Whoa. There we go. That's what I wanted to do. Anyway, Lowry not doing especially well, unfortunately. Sorry, Rymark not doing especially well. L Lowry is hitting him pretty hard. Rymark, however, still holding strong. They do have a lot of firepower. Sorry, a lot of metal. They have a decent amount of firepower. And they are switching to ships. They are going for a ship switch. We are just going to see just Amphib versus Amphib. While Lowry, however, does get a lot of fusion reactors, this is a bit dangerous. These fusion reactors get hit. They are going to destroy everything above them. And that will be a problem, for pretty obvious reasons. But at this point, that's not happening. In fact, Rymark is focusing very heavily on defense. However, if that's successful, and yeah, there, there it goes, there it is. Rymark, if they're going to focus on this, however, they have a lot to go through. They have a lot of construction that Lowry has built up. Lowry has a lot of... How many workers does Lowry have? So there's 28 workers, and of that, it looks like about two of them are Rhyme No, four of them are Rymarks. So yeah, Lowry has two dozen workers just going around the map expanding everywhere like mad. Just expanding like rabbits. There's building metal extractors all around the map, getting defense nests all around the map. At this point, Lowry has taken half the map in under two minutes. They've taken almost all the map. This is a... This is a big development. Lowry is going to be pretty hard-pressed to lose from this point on. And Rymark can... Well, by the same token, going to be hard-pressed to win... Going for a lot of hunters, though, which makes sense. They want to get rid of these ducks pretty quickly. And Lowry has quite a few of them. So enough hunters coming in there. That's, well, underwater riot. That's the whole idea. 
And I think it'll be fairly successful. We'll see though, because the underwater ride idea, I don't know if it's the most reliable. But yeah, that's that's the idea. Underwater riot, and then from there it's just actually nice. Well, see, this is the thing. Lowry has been expanding a lot, but they've been naked expanding a lot, and Rymark is making them pay for that, getting rid of all of these naked metal extractors. Now, of course, that means that where the missile ex sorry, the uh, missile extractors, <laughs> metal extractors are being built, where the er where the conches are, that's going to involve a lot of urchins being built. Great many urchins are going to be built pretty soon, and when that's done. That area here in the center will be far more consolidated, but over the south, not so much. The south area is still very vulnerable, and Rymark is taking full advantage, or was! No, never mind, the ducks are going forward. They were being pulled back. It looked like for defense purposes. And duck versus duck battle. Loud, it looks like they're kind of letting that go. They're trying to come in with a good position, but so far, Rymark's actually winning out of this. The important thing is that Lowry is not defending against the attack by the ducks. Lowry's going to destroy the ducks, and the ducks should probably escape as best they can. And they are not actually doing that. They're kind of lining up for combat. But they really should be escaping. That's what they really need to do. That's a thing. But they aren't. Which is unfortunate because that means they're probably going to die. Yeah, Rymark is... Wow, they are taking a lot of damage here from these... Wow, okay. Another dozen ducks coming in here. Tearing apart the southeast. I don't think there's enough defenses in the southeast that'll actually stop them. And that being said, Rymark's ducks do escape, and Rymark coming with the hunters, tearing apart those ducks as well, over to the north side of the map. I apologize if I missed anything, there was a lot going on. Scallops in the center, getting rid of what has been consolidated recently. And these hunters are coming in with a vengeance, but there has been a sea switch from Lowry, and that is more hunters as well, so hunter on hunter. But Rymark now, unlike last game, having the advantage of hunter numbers. And able to pretty heavily tear apart Lowry's forces. Lowry losing a lot of their hunters right away. One, two hunters go down almost immediately, and even more of them go down thanks to that here. And that is a lot of hunter damage. One more hunter going down there. I, just, the thing is, though, Lowry has a much stronger economy, so even with that, even with that change, it's still, it's still defender's advantage. Lowry is still going to be able to rebuild. Uh, they're going to be able to build up quickly enough to get rid of all these hunters. That is not going to work out too well, and at the same time, they are getting a lot of reclaim from Rymark. Although the Hunters are coming in to try to get rid of the Ducks. Despite that, the Hunters haven't really dealt a whole lot of damage. They're dealing a small dent. Lowry went down to 11k from 12k metal in army value. But that is still a small dent. At the same time, Lowry actually getting pincered here. Right next to Rymark's base by a bunch of Ducks from Rymark. So losing a few Ducks there. Rymark going into Crusaders. I mean, that worked pretty well last time. They did keep themselves alive for quite some time with the Crusaders. And given that there's a lot of hunters, the Crusaders are probably not a bad idea. And the Scallops as well coming in just for the range. This is where Scallops are going to be more useful. Those depth charges against ships. Because they do fling them above water. That's more powerful than it looks. And pylons going down is... Oh, not quite. But if these pylons go down, that's... That is not trivial. Like, this is overdriving by about one and a half times to two times or so. It's original value. If that pylon goes down, that... We'll get rid of a lot. Oh, is it gonna go down? No, oh, they're focusing the urchin. Okay, there it goes. Now it goes down, taking out a lot of taking out the radar and the ducks under. But at least that does reduce a lot of the overdrive potential, because Lowry does have two fusion reactors, so that is a big deal. And over to the southeast, <laughs> urchins being built up by a bunch of conches, and it looks like Lowry just trying to urchin crawl their way into the south side of the map. And Rymark, okay, Rymark making a big mistake here, moving all their forces. First off, big mistake, moving all their forces. That's a big mistake, they don't need to. And second off, moving their forces that were next to Lowry's base down to the south side of the map. That is a very long trek. These units right here, that would have been enough. These units over here did not need to move back, and that's giving Lowry a bunch of breathing room, pulling the pressure right off. That's exactly what Lowry wanted to have happen. Rymark did not need to do that and should not have done that. So that is going to be a bit of a problem, unfortunately, for Rymark. I mean, these conches will go down, but that was a lot of position that was lost. A huge amount of position lost, and these hunters now being able to move out freely as a result, but the Crusaders can come in. Seven Crusaders so far, that should be enough, I think, but it's kind of tough to say because it is a lot of defenders' advantage to deal with. Lowry does have 70 metal worth of units being built every second. Over 
the conchas have pretty much gone down. Yeah, the conchas are going down, and despite that, the hunters are following. Although the hunters are now going into where Rymark has a lot of forces laid out, which means Rymark has to be very careful tactically. If they can separate their forces nicely and stop the hunters from just destroying them all at once, that'll work out beautifully. But otherwise, the hunters are going to deal a lot of damage. And the Crusaders... Nine Crusaders so far, ten Crusaders so far, and the Hunters are meeting up with the Scallops! The Scallops able to pretty much machine gun Death Charges into the Hunters. I mean, Hunters are Riot units, so they do have a shorter range than Scallops. The scallop range, underwater 430 compared to Riot, the Riot Hunter 340. So the Scallops can outrange Hunters. Though the Scallops do have to contend with the amount of wreckage on the ground, Hunters do not. Hunters have nothing to contend with in terms of pathing blocks other than this hill. These Scallops are still in a tight spot, but able to get rid of a lot of the Hunters regardless. However, this is more in Lowry's territory than it is in Rymark, so Lowry is ultimately getting the benefit of all this. And now with 10 Crusaders, Rymark is forced to move. Being pushed back, buoys set up above ground. Sorry, above water. Buoys floating up to try to get rid of the Crusaders. The Crusaders just... The Crusaders should move out! And it looks like they actually are. They're on fight orders, but they are auto-skirming. They probably should just move straight forward. The buoy isn't that big of a deal. Just move straight forward get rid of it, and deal with Lowry's base. But Lowry at the same time going to the south side of the map, and they, and the Hunter's finally getting rid of this. This whole scallop setup, that's finally gone. More ducks coming to the center for Rymark, though. Rymark trying to get rid of the boys as best as possible. I mean, the ducks are gonna, not going to have a problem at all. Torpedo launchers are going to have an easier time, and the Crusaders finally moving in. Crusaders and Hunters, but Crusaders in the main one. Crusaders are finally moving in, and that is going to possibly flip the game over to Rymark. We'll see, though. Rymark is still not doing especially well, but they do have the metal advantage. They do have an army advantage. They're just not in the best position. And the problem is that their southeast is basically destroyed. Or very nearly destroyed. The southeast is dead. But Lowry's main base is coming under heavy fire, getting a lot of pressure. But I think Lowry will probably... I mean, Orphelius is calling a GG. Not entirely sure for whom, but... Okay, Lowry actually pulling back. Yeah, actually, see, Rymark is getting an advantage then. Lowry pulling back from this, though these Crusaders should probably spread out a bit more than they are now, and they are indeed line moving, so that's good. But yeah, they're getting rid of the ducks as well. The depth charge is dropping down, killing those ducks. Rymark is pulling ahead, slowly but surely pulling ahead. And now, that being said, 30 ducks coming. So three dozen ducks. That's what the Crusaders have to deal with. If they can deal with three dozen ducks, they and a bunch of hunters as well. They and these hunters over here, those can deal with. Three dozen ducks, sorry, four dozen ducks. Sorry, whoa, 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 92. Wow, that's actually not a joke. No, sorry, those, some of those are Rymarks. So yeah, three dozen ducks, and they are dealing with three dozen ducks, though a lot of them are going down. We're down to seven Crusaders from the original ten, but most of the ducks are going down very rapidly, and at the same time, Rymar coming in with their own ducks. Getting rid of Lowry's ducks, and Hunter's coming in as well to deal with this. And now the underwater is pretty much belonging to Rymark. They can get rid of these Typhoons as well. The Hunters are still a problem, though. But if the Typhoons go down, that is going to basically seal it. Rymark's still in a good position. Rymark actually still in a decent position. Lowry trying to take the south side of the map. Lowry reclaiming their way back into the game. That's pretty much all they have, is that reclaim from that entire Scallop Hunter fight. But even with that, it's going to be tough to do. It's going to be tough to pull off. And more Hunters and Crusaders coming in. Half a dozen Crusaders left, but a bunch of Hunters coming in to continue to dominate the underwater game. But Typhoons to get rid of them. And the Crusaders can't really deal with those too effectively, but Scallops could. If more Scallops will be built, and more Scallops have been built. These decent amount of Scallops. So yeah, Rymark just needs to pull in with these Scallops. And getting rid of the... Okay, getting rid of the Anglers. We'll see if more Brawlers come in because the Anglers are now dead. I don't know if that'll happen. I kind of doubt it. Rymark's pushing all their metal into sea and into Amphib. I doubt they're going to push any into gun gunships any longer. I mean, it wouldn't be a bad idea. The Typhoons would basically go down to them. But I doubt we're going to see that. And actually, the Typhoons are, in fact, going down. Kind of a combination of Crusader and Hunter. Just a sheer number of units stopping the Typhoons from being able to maneuver as effectively as they like to, causing the Crusaders to be able to hit them. Same with this Hunter over here. That's enough damage that Lowry is, once again, a bit in the back foot. It's still fairly even, but yeah, Rymark is starting to get bunch more power here. I need to drop the font size once again so we can see how much metal Rymark has. Okay, so Lowry getting quite a bit of reclaim, but Rymark still ahead overall. Rymark left with six Crusaders, all at full health. 
more... Oh, sun, serpents coming in. Wow, have not seen those. A little bit surprised at that, but yeah, I could sort of see being used. I think the, these ducks will probably get rid of it, though. It's a bit of a risk. The Crusaders, however, are getting rid of more Typhoons, but still, those Typhoons... That's kind of where Scalps would come in handy. That is where Skeeters would come in handy. But yeah, the Crusader is still able to push through this. Able to get rid of a few Mariners as well. Despite the sheer number of Mariners, despite the reclaim... Actually, all this reclaim is pretty much what's keeping Lowry afloat. But that is not going to last for too much longer. And once that's done, Lowry's going to be sunk. And with that, that'll be the game. But I don't think that Lowry is still too concerned. Lowry is still pushing out pretty quickly, pretty heavily. They still have a lot of metal strategies. They still have a lot of map presence. If not solid map control. Rymark just doesn't want to split their forces up, and that's totally reasonable. But Rymark does not want to split their forces, which means that Lowry does still have the south side. If Lowry loses the south side, that is game. That's it. But if Lowry keeps that, they're still going to be in a decent position. However, these Crusaders are stopping any ducks coming in here. The ducks really can't do much. Even the sheer number of ducks that was there earlier, even that... Well, how many ducks belong to Lowry? It's still three dozen ducks for Lowry. Lowry is just pumping out ducks there's no tomorrow. One duck every couple seconds. But even then, I think that's not enough. I think really Scallops would be the better option. If Lowry were to switch over to Scallops, that would do it. And Rymark, at the same time, does have enough Scallops here. A lot of Scallops, a lot of ducks. Mostly ducks. If they were able to get that through... Actually, never mind. The Scallops have already pushed forward. Which, unfortunately for them, means they're hitting the ducks and not the hunters. Which are nowhere, actually. Lowry has... Not really been focusing on sea too much. Focusing on mariners. Not really focusing on sea. Focusing on their primary attack power underwater. And these crusaders can basically just move in right now. Get rid of these mariners. Get rid of these urchins. And that's exactly what they're doing. If they just tear that apart, they're going to do wonderfully. And these serpents coming in here, I don't really know. I haven't seen them before. But it looks like they're probably going to be used just to get rid of the rest of these ships. They will not work well against the ducks, mind you. The ducks will tear them apart. There's just too many of them. But the the Mariners will die, and it looks like the Ducks are mostly focusing on Rymark's Ducks. Which means that Rymark still has a pretty good position, and Rymark... Okay, Rymark has an awesome position. Never mind. Rymark has managed to basically put Lowry so much in the back foot that Lowry has a third of the medal. So yeah, this is where the game is really called. And Orphelius did call it before, and that was definitely correct. As Lowry really doesn't have much to work from, just trying to frantically get up static defenses, which isn't doing anything. And these sniper submarines just getting rid of that one urchin. Getting rid of the ships as they go through. And really, those Crusaders could move in far more boldly than they are now. But it doesn't really matter. This is still game. Or very nearly so. Because that is that's basically game, yeah. That, that's it. Another wave coming in from Rymark. 25 ducks, 6 scallops, and really no ducks coming in from Lowry. They were all destroyed by Rymark's ducks. Except for the ones that are coming in now, which are getting heavily damaged by Rymark Scallops. Surprisingly enough, despite the fact that they're not great underwater, they're still good enough. The Death Charge is doing a good enough job getting rid of the ducks. But if the Scallop went above water, if it went on this land here, that would destroy the ducks very rapidly. Underwater is the only place where ducks have a chance against Scallops. Otherwise, ducks are completely dead. I'm still getting surprised though that these Sniper Submarines are not being used... What are they called again? Serpents. I'm still surprised the Serpents are not being pushed a bit more forward to get rid of the Hunters, get rid of the Typhoons, and get rid of the Mariners. But they're being pushed forward enough. They are still getting rid of them, so that does work. There we go. There we go. Now being pushed forward. Just get rid of the last few units. I mean, Rymark has basically won this game. And actually, now the South is being taken, so this is where Lowry really has no chance. I think Lowry is going to throw in the towel once the South expansion has been destroyed. I mean, Lowry has so little to work with, and Rymark basically has... The army they need to take the map, they don't have the map yet. The map control is still fairly even, but that's about to change as these ducks are ripping apart everything in the south side of the map. While at the same time, Lowry's base is getting heavily attacked. It's been blockaded for the last 10 minutes. And now that's really coming to fruition as the serpents are finishing everything off that the crusaders could not. And more serpents coming in. Yeah, it's just serpent, hunter, crusader. That's all that's being built. And then, of course, the sheer... Massive Duck Boy and Scallop Army. That's mostly centered in the south side of the map, which is taking out the south side of the map. You can take out the rest of the south side of the map, harass this entire area pretty effectively. Not so much here. That's a bad move because that's all the Serpents. Although if they go over the hill and then around the other side, that might work. 
Oh, yeah. A warlord, yeah, because there's going to be a Strider hub. Yeah, the warlord being, for those of you not familiar, that is a Strider ship. But Strider ships don't really get I mean, the Striders can be used, but there's no Strider hub right now. Level 3 the commander for Rymark, that's surprising. Yeah, Striders aren't really used. But they can be used. I have seen the use in 1v1, and 30 minutes in, that's not a bad time to use Striders. But I don't think that's going to happen. I do not see a Strider hub anywhere around the map. I don't see any Warlords being built. I don't see anything to that effect. It's just Crusaders pushing in. I don't even know if Rymark has considered that. Building a Warlord or a Reef. And Lowry trying to come in, but not going to be able to. Not enough ducks. Lowry probably realizes at this point how far behind they are. I think this is going to be GG. If not, then when the Crusaders come in and rip this area apart. Serpent's coming, however, for revenge. Serpents from Lowry are coming in, and Rymark Serpents are not targeting them. So one of the Crusaders is going to go down, probably. Might be tricky, though. It's been forced to spread fire, but yeah, no, that, that Serpent's going down. And with that, this is going to be game. Crusaders finally getting close enough to deal with the factories directly. Get rid of the Caretakers. They get rid of the Fusion Reactor. That's really going to do it. But I don't think that's going to happen. I think that'll just be the factory first, and then R Lowry's going to throw in the towel. And Lowry, even in the center of the map, does have a hunter, but that's not enough. That's nowhere near enough. And there we go. Lowry throws in the towel. GG. And that is game. So Rymark won and Lowry won one. But I think that was all they really had that they had played. I don't know if there was a whole series of this. But yeah, that was a couple games. So I hope you enjoyed that. Definitely a different approach to C game. Rather than going for the ship for ship. It was amp versus amp. But yeah. Ducks and scalps are about all that work underwater. Everything else basically requires that it's on land for it to work. Which is a little bit unusual, come to think of it. But good to know. I mean, buoys are kind of halfway because buoys have to surface to fire. And I think archers... Archers don't have to surface to fire, but they do have to be above water. But I don't think they actually do surface. I don't think they float. Buoys do float. So yeah, that's where they're useful. Anyway, that is it. That is that for me tonight. So thank you all for watching. And apologies for any technical issues on Hitbox because that was... I heard a few things, a few lag issues. But yeah, that is... That's not something I don't know if I can really deal with too much. Sorry about that. Oh, archers do float, apparently. Okay. Well, at any rate, archers can't hit underwater. That's the important problem. So, that is going to be it. Yeah, Skazzy pointed out that archers do, in fact, float. So yeah, archers cannot hit underwater. That's the important part. So, hope you enjoyed that. Rather interesting for the... It's rather interesting for the Amph Amph matchup, but really not the most interesting matchup, I'm afraid. But I hope you enjoyed that regardless. Thank you for watching, and have a good night, everyone.